Elohim Power Conference, which is an arm of Elohim Power House Ministry, began in 2010. It is a multinational Christian conference that attracts several people from different countries around the globe, including Middle East, Caribbean, Israel, and the United States of America. Our focus is largely people but we have gone beyond Nebu because we have brought many people from America, from Europe, from many African nations. Our essence is to ensure God is done on earth as it is done in heaven. And then the Lord also said that if you start this conference, I will bring the world to your village. So we believed him. And in the midst of kidnapping in 2010, January, the first Elohim Power Conference was held. And we had about people from five continents of the world, white Americans, white Israelis, and so on. This conference, which since inception has been held consecutively for eight years, was born in 2008 after an outreach organized by the visionary Apostle Onyechi Donnell in his hometown, Nebu, Anambra State of Nigeria. Interestingly, it wasn't my idea to start a conference. In this weekly meeting, I told you about covenant devotion, which will which was once a week. One day the Lord spoke to us, said, take your team to Nibo for a prayer and fasting retreat. Nibo is my hometown in Anambra State. Since I have a house there, here, so I, we moved to Nibo. We had these three days of prayer and fasting. It was just a few hours before we finished, we waited, we weren't hearing anything spectacular other than revelations and prophecies, but nothing like this is why God asked us to come. And suddenly, in the wee hours of the last day, the Lord spoke, said, I want you to do me a conference in this town. And as I began to pray, the Lord laid the name of the conference, Elohim Power Conference and laid the vision in my heart that it's going to be an international conference. And mind you that in 1993, when I dedicated the compound where my house is in the neighbor to the Lord, God did spectacular things. It was 31st December 1993. Souls were won. The traditional king that took over from my late father, who was the immediate past traditional king, was there. And when we were thanking God for the success of the outreach and dedication of the compound, the Lord began to speak. Remember, there was a vision of a light shining from the center of my compound to the ends of the world, a house built and things. Later on, in 2008, when the Lord gave this vision for Elohim Power Conference, I, I could relate it with what happened on December 31st, 1993. Part of the vision have been achieved the light shining from my compound to the rest of the world I've, and my wife and i have ministered all over the world so that was how the first conference was held elohim power conference is an interdenominational gathering of christian leaders and those who desire to make positive impact in society elohim power is a ministry founded by God and comprises of people from all denominations. The leader is an Anglican, I'm a Pentecostal, 
there are some Catholics there, some Pentecostals there. It is it it, it was born of God to bring forth powerfully the word of deliverance to our people across nations. <laughs> this is surprising from Nebo, but across nations. I've attended several years of these conferences here and people were coming from all over the world. And and so it's a it's a conference to look forward to. It's a conference that teaches the deep word of God for salvation for uh, increase in our knowledge of God and that's why we are here this 2018. The future of Elohim is all-powerful ministry full of fire and power expanding to the neighboring towns and villages of Anambra state of Nigeria beyond Nigeria to Australia soon in Sweden is already happening in the United States of America and the rest of the nations of the world Elohim will get there mark what I'm telling you one of the things that is striking about this vision is that it's not run by any church it is a community-based rural-based global movement because the Lord said to us that what we are he, he, he starting will reach the whole world and the Lord helped me to raise the ten-point vision of the Elohim Power Conference Number one, to reintroduce God in the church and nations as the God of power and might. A lot of things have happened in the church that many people no more remember that he's the God of power and might. Number two, to break satanic powers in the nearby Anambra state and Nigeria and to train others to pull down satanic strongholds in their communities and nations. Number three, to win souls for Christ and to act as a catalyst for revival while giving direction for life and ministry to God's people. Number four, to promote missions and evangelism and to encourage those called to the nations. Number five, to create the right atmosphere for business and investment. Six, to teach and disciple politicians and business people to fulfill godly destinies. Seven, to provide mentorship and ministerial partnerships across the continents. Eight, to provide training and release of people for effective ministry with integrity. Because we find that ministers, pastors have been misunderstood a lot. Part of it is the attack of Satan, but much of it is because we have not been able, many people have not been able to do ministry with integrity, with transparency, with honesty. And we felt that one of the things that God wants us to do is to bring back the integrity in ministry. To particularly mobilize, train and equip women and youth to effectively contribute to social transformation. Number nine, to equip people for personal, family, community, and national deliverance. Ten, to promote literature ministry. So these ten points have been the guiding principles and vision for the Elohim Power Conference. of Elohim Powerhouse Ministry, Elohim Power Conference has brought development to Nebo Town and its environs by creating the right atmosphere for business and investment, as well as bringing the attention of the government to Nebo Town. 
This has led to the appointment of Nibu's sons and daughters into various offices of the government. We are not only you know, uh, sent here by God to minister to the people spiritual or minister to their spiritual needs alone. Like uh, the wife of the vision bearer and the person of uh, Pastor Mrs. Sudo Daniel uh, has a, a, a ministry uh, that you know that, that the welfare ministry and, and this welfare ministry has to do with reaching out to the less privileged such as you know uh, giving out of um, welfare material like food, like clothing, shoe, children's school bag, you know, and so many things that you know was uh, is given to to the people, and uh, an extension of it also is a, a medical uh, a, a mission. Uh, right now, as I talk to you, we have some nurses and pharmacists that uh, are here to attend to the people in the in the area of their you know their their head their heads. And last year, after immediately after the conference of last year, 2017. The visual coordinator and the person of Apostle Chidane receive another mandate to organize what is called um, Kindred Medical Outreach, of which he, he, he came with some doctors, some nurses, and pharmacists to minister to you know, members of his kindred. And then uh, that was another aspect of reaching out to the people and ministering to their, to their head. So it's not only spiritually that we're ministering to the people. The wife of Apostle, Pastor Mr. Daniel, minister to the people, she has the welfare you know, aspect. The Apostle have the spiritual you know, aspect that also reach out to other aspects of uh, the community. So these are areas that the vision is reaching out to people and imparting and touching people's you know, lives in the community of Nebo. It's not just spiritually. Tremendously, the, 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 the program has affected women because in this program, women, you know, um, ministered to in diverse areas, you know, their families are touched, their own lives are being touched. And then we do a um, welfare program that affect families. We share things to them. Women collect, you know, a lot of things, food stuff, clothing, and their children are being given a lot of things, and they go home happy and affect, and uh, you know, positively affected by this program. It has also fostered peace and unity amongst the people by winning souls for Jesus Christ, giving direction for life and ministry. Elohim has been reaching um, the grassroots. Um, the, the land has been delivered, has been touched by Elohim. You know, different aspects, you know, uh, the land itself has received the touch from what God is doing through Elohim. God has been doing us some things. We have seen lives transformed. We have seen people discover their ministries. We have seen people blessed. We have seen people being healed, delivered, saved. And that has really propelled us and, you know, um, made us, you know, spurred us on to continue with this program. Well, I would say that the neighbor has changed for good because um, the well thought out words delivered by people who are invited, most of them very good uh, spiritual people, has helped my people a lot. This is a conference that is held for uh, about a week every year. And very many people attend it. And as they attend it, they listen very well to what is being discussed. So I would say it has helped us very much. It is interesting to note that Apostle Luigi Daniel, who is the founder of Elohim Powerhouse Ministry and the convener of Elohim Power Conference, is a pharmacist by training and was practicing his trade until God called him and his wife into the ministry. Yes, I'm a pharmacist and I had a company and uh, in 1999, about 20 years ago, the Lord said, I will send you to the ends of the earth to set the captives free. And he demanded that I shut down my business. It was challenging. My children were still young. Um, I was not going to be a pastor. I was not going to pastor a church or open one. So... I wasn't sure how the income will come, but uh, I was in love with Jesus Christ and uh, I was prepared to obey him. I knew that some hardship would fall. I told my wife, we agreed, and then some people began to bring counsel. Some said that it's not wise if you have established a company to close it down. 
because of ministry. Some will tell me about many other people who combine business and ministry. Some suggested that I employed a pharmacist to run the place while I do ministry. But I knew that that was not what God was asking for. And I also knew that if the business who was running, my heart would be there. So I shut it down and sold it completely. And I began to preach first in Nigeria and uh, God fulfilled what he said. He opened doors of ministry for my wife and I to all the continents of the world. I think it's only one continent. It's not I think. It's only one continent that we have not entered. And at least I have, my wife has not been able to travel with me to all the nations. But she has gone with me to 30 nations of the world where we preach the gospel. However, despite the daunting challenges of full-time ministry, Apostle Loyachi Daniel has stayed true to his call and ministry, which has resulted into a fruitful harvest. Part of my fear when God called me into the ministry was that um, when he was asking me to leave my business, maybe it would not be completely wrong that I had some pride which will not allow me to beg. Remember that my parents are British graduates. Remember that I was raised in the GRE. Remember that by 1961, my mother already had a car. By 1957, my father had a car. I, so I was raised in European quarters. So I had, I had a privileged upbringing. So it wasn't going to be easy for me to ask people for money. That has remained my greatest fear in ministry. However, I noticed something. Once you agree with God to do what he has asked you to do, he opens the door for finances. For instance, because I need SUVs for my guests in this conference, two SU God gave me two SUVs last year. So I've lived by faith. Some my books earned me some money. The honorarium I get when I go to minister locally and internationally and me some money. And then sometimes people say the Lord laid it in their heart to do this, give me a vehicle, send money. One of the speakers just yesterday said to me he will give 0.5 million towards the building. I didn't ask him at all didn't. How could I have asked the speaker? I should give offering to a speaker. Last year, a speaker came for the first time to the conference and he gave one million towards the building that God asked me to start. So, I think that the major problem people have is fear and unbelief. They are afraid to start. They are afraid to obey God. They are afraid to live by faith. But I must tell you that it's not a very easy thing. It was a humbling experience for me. Currently, there's an ongoing building project of the ministry in Nebo, Anambra State, which is Elohim Mission House and Training Center, of which upon completion would have three floors, 18 rooms, one seminar room, four sitting rooms, two lounges, two laundries, two kitchens and one kitchenette and now he asked me for this vision to build a house i drew a sketch i asked the architect to make a sketch for a story building and the lord said it's too small that it should be a minimum of three floors so that's how i trusted him with little money and it was going to cost maybe 100 million and I didn't have up to 0.5 million. And I dug the foundation. I was in my study one day on the 27th August. The Lord said, I want you to start building in the month, this month of August. August is the eighth month and it's the month of new beginning, which means I had three days to start building a house. You know, there are some testimonies you share, people do not believe you. I'm quickly, but thankfully, I've already made, had an approved plan. So. I had to drive down from my, the city to the village, call my builder, and it was started. But to the glory of God, 
this house has been roofed and we are plastering now. It has a total of 18 rooms. 17 of the rooms have private toilets, we have three kitchens and kitchenette, two laundries, we have about six lounges, and we have a mini conference hall. So, this came by faith. Hello, Hip Hop Conference, which usually holds twice annually. The first being in February, which is for leaders and ministers, and the second in June, which is mainly for youths, features flag parade, other different countries of the world, world importation, trainings, teachings, high praise, drama presentation, etc. During the conference, registration is free, free medical and welfare services, free lunch, amongst others. Apart from the main conference, which is Hello Empower Conference, uh, that comes uh, every first uh, week of uh, February of every year, uh, last year the, the bishop uh, bearer of this uh, great move in the person of Apostle Nye Chidane and uh, also my father in the Lord. The Lord gave him another, you know, uh, extension of the main conference, which is Elohim Power Conference, which is a conference reaching out to the youth, which is in line with, um, you know, Elohim Warfare and Deliverance Conference and Youth Elohim Youth Explosion. So we started that last year in the month of June, and it was a great move of God's power reaching out to the youth. Uh, this hall was filled up with youth, which were imparted by the gospel and then a lot of them gave their life to Christ were baptized in the Holy Ghost and then we see that as you know reaching out to the youth to turn them from the social verses in the community so that's another extension of the the vision reaching out to the youth which was born out of the main conference of Elohim power conference so we also have the youth uh, in mind reaching out to them through the vision of Elohim youth uh, explosion that comes up every month of June annually like you see in this conference, I, we feed everybody that comes lunch. I had to kill a cow on Monday. So some people do conferences and do ministry to get money from the people. In this case, registration is free. Medical service is free. Welfare is free. Lunch is free. Then we carry them free. Even hire mattresses. Pay for the mattress for them to use free. So uh, I find that what, why many ministries have not grown is that they want to use ministry as business to make money. They want to um, twist people, tell lies, cajole people to get money. But if we can invest and give, then the Lord blesses us financially and materially. Really? Sons and daughters of Nebo home and abroad, including international delegates, look forward to converging in Nebo and Umbra State, Nigeria, for the Elohim Power Conference. Due to the impact it's been having on attendees, community, state, and the country at large. And there are testimonies all over the world. You know, people, uh, people of Nibo all over the world have been testifying. Even though they are not here, people, you know, Nibo people in diaspora, they've been sharing testimonies that they too are receiving, you know, what God is doing in this place. Even though they are not present physically, but Lord, they, they keep on testifying. You know, testimonies keep on flowing from all over the world, from the U.S., from the U.K., you know, from different parts of the world. And we are glad in what God is doing. What I, Elohim Power Conference has helped to stop, to disencourage, is worship of idol, paganism. They have always preached against it. Elohim Power Conference, the future is even brighter.